I decided to teach because I really want to make a difference in, in children's lives. I know a lot of adults will say kids never know when they're ready. Learners don't want our opinion. I don't think a lot of learners take the subject seriously. I was taught that sex gives you AIDS. I knew that sex was a bad thing to do. We grew up knowing it is taboo to talk about it. We were a bit shy to hold each other's hand or to kiss each other. A teacher needs to remember that this child needs support. South Africa has a very unique advantage as we have 11 official languages and a multitude of customs and traditions which contribute to our diversity. However, the challenges of interacting with people who have many different backgrounds, ideologies and philosophies are vast, especially when it comes to sexuality. Welcome to Breaking the Silence. Today we talk about how the traditions we grew up with have shaped our thinking and informed the decisions and choices we make today. In this episode, we chat to educators on how their customs and traditions have shaped their views on sexuality. Our panel of educators are Mr. Mugwena, Ms. Shabane, Mrs. Tevin, Ms. Kubai, Ms. Mosari, Mr. Motlova. Our learners will be seated backstage watching the discussion unfold. I'm Tavilin Tomo, 16 years of age. I love reading. Reading is just my hobby. I believe that I have a great personality and I can interact with people very well. My name is Aurelia Madiba. I'm 16 years of age. I am crazy, yes. But then uh, I love poetry. While my teachers relate to me because they know that I'm full of jokes and I love life. My name is Sharon Kaladi. I'm 17 years of age. I'm in grade 11. I love drama and dancing. Welcome to a very special episode of Breaking the Silence. It's against our creative norm to start the discussion with our educators, but I'm very excited for this particular episode. I want to get straight into it. Does culture limit how we express ourselves and how we support our learners at school? Uh, culture is something that is so important to us. Mm -hmm. And whenever we talk to learners about our culture, these learners, because they are of modern, mm -hmm. so, so mm -hmm. culture, it's, it's, it's so important to, to, to us and even to learners. My culture is hip hop. Hip hop raised me. I feel like hip hop kind of made me the kind of person I am today. What are your traditions? Well, uh, my dad is Tonga and mm -hmm. then my mom is Tuana, so I grew up in a very diverse home. Mm -hmm. But then they made sure that um, everything is balanced, you know. My family are both Swati, my mother and my father. So basically, I was brought in a, in, a, in a certain way. There was culture and tradition involved. You know, as a young girl, you, you grow up, you go to school. When you finish school, you get married, then you have children. So basically, most of us were brought in a certain way, whereby traditions are involved. We say, this is our family tradition. This is how things are done. Mm. So, your tradition? My tradition is uh, Tswana. Both my parents are Tswana. My, my mother and my father. They are Tswana, so mm -hmm. even my children, yeah. I just teach them those uh, cultures. My tradition is Christian, and like the Christian culture teaches us more about respect, how to respect adults. I also fo follow traditional beliefs, Tsonga and Tswana. I'm a Christian. I was brought up in a Christian way. I come from a traditional Hindu family, yes. both parents, and so. Uh, our upbringing was steeped in a lot of religion and cultural practices. Mm -hmm. Like sexuality wasn't a topic that I would discuss 30 mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't feel comfortable mm -hmm. discussing it with maybe mum or dad. I mean, I'm coming from a Zulu tradition mm -hmm. in KZN. Uh, I'm hearing everyone talking about their parents. Uh, for me, unfortunately, I grew up under adoption and then later uh, foster care. Mm -hmm. So I grew up observing what is happening in the community. In my culture, the young girls go for virginity uh, testing. testing. Yes, so, yeah. Uh, both my parents are Tswanas. Yes. And uh, we were raised in a home which we follow both our, our, our Tswana uh, tradition and, and religion. But in most cases, uh, religion seemed to be dominating. Okay. That's what we said. 
I was raised by a single mom yes. who uh, was complicated herself in that there are things that she would not believe in. I mm -hmm. mean, the things that I would see other Kosa speaking people would do. So, and, um, Kosa. I'm Kosa, yes. Okay. But okay. I would be amazed by this a uh, a woman who is very complicated, but also who is who certain things that she rejects. Like what are these she, things that she would reject? Like she would be um, you, when someone has died, she would say "Hare uh, Rauli." We don't. Uh, when the morning is in a particular manner okay. that you would not put your black armband. You know mm -hmm. what that we do, and uh, like you, she would not even force you that it's a must. When there's death in the family, you must slaughter. Did culture ever resonate in you? and almost guide the steps you took when you were adolescent? For me, I was very rebellious, you know, I was yeah. very inquisitive, but I feel like my culture grounded me. And mm. my parents all, were always there to reprimand me, not just very in a very harsh way, ne? but in a sense that, you know what, you're a teenager, you're allowed to explore, but remember, this is what grounds you. Because your culture allows you to do anything or you should just follow everything that your culture says you must do or what? Okay, first things first guys, I'm not like normal teenagers, let's start there. My culture is, is expressing myself the way I am, but having boundaries. For example, respect and all those things and integrity, you have to keep them steady and make sure that your respect is visible to everyone. Where did we individually in this room get our sex ed from? friends mm -hmm. at school and obviously with books yeah. more books and then after books from that school. from school or mm -hmm. whatever books we can get our hands on and thereafter you know we would have uh, we would ask peers and so on with mine i think it was it was by accident uh. i was sent from my house to go to to our neighbor i can't remember exactly what i was supposed to fetch and then when i go to the house i opened the door without actually Knocking. knocking and then oh my just when I got there I got something now what's the something that you got <laughs> yeah you, you you walked into the act yeah two two adults how old were you I think I was I was about nine. Oh my gosh the trauma <laughs> and and you can imagine well I, because I didn't know anything what scared me was when the lady actually shouted to say then I knew that I was I was in I was in trouble I think I was in grade eight. Yeah. Um, we used to play netball with grade nines. So they would talk about their boyfriends and all of that. But I didn't actually understand until my life orientation teacher actually yeah. started teaching us about sexuality. Mm -hmm. That's when I understood and then I went back home. And then I asked my, my mom, because my dad was very strict. Your dad was a no-go zone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then I asked my mom and then um, she then explained to me, but not in detail. I also became a, a, a teenage father. You know, uh, is it? Oh, yes, at school and uh, you know. Um, How was that for you? Uh, well, it, for, for me, you know, it was that I, I felt the sense of marginalization, that there was something wrong I did. I think sex in other traditions um, is a big deal since you've got to talk about it when you're 20 and so forth. When you're 20 and below, you can't talk about it because they still consider you as a child and asking them about sex will be disrespectful because you're still young. When we bring all these diversities of ours into a classroom, does our culture stand in the way? We are living in the postmodernist society. And then we, we still have educators who have their own social cultural behaviors and values. Do you understand? Who have to teach this content, you know, or this program that is based on sexuality. And we have this child who is living in this postmodern society believes in that. We also have a parent on the other side who may not see or who may not define sexuality the way I define it. So most of the time it's us who teach the learners whereby we also encourage the parents teach your children about these things. Hence the, the only chance that we have is in class but when they get home they hide you know they can't talk about it. That's why they go to they, they, they download porn, they watch movies, so they create their own ideas as this is a postmodern society. We as students feel like these teachers are not giving us more details. If you ask them about sex, they, they will tell you that you are being disrespectful. Do you feel that sometimes when you're teaching sex, you are afraid uh, by giving them information about sex and intercourse and the reproductive system, you are giving them a ticket to go and do, to go and do it? 
Do you sometimes get that sense as an No, educator? I don't feel that. You don't? No, I don't. At all? No. Why not? Because I, I just feel if a child asks something and if I can't give him the right answer, then he's going to ask somebody else and he may not get the right information mm -hmm. from there. And that's dangerous. Mm. But, but you'll also lose credibility. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, learners, you know, they look up to a teachers as an embodiment of knowledge. Mm -hmm. and, and already, well, when they ask certain things, for them it is to confirm their knowledge. Mm -hmm. They confirm what they yes. already know. Yes. So, so you stand the risk of losing their respect. Mm -hmm. you, if you, if you, you tend to, uh, to, to be judgmental, to use religion, to, to use culture, that's going to impede you. But it's not long, only going to impede you, it's also going to, you stand the risk of losing them. We're going to take a break and when we come back, I'd really like for us to unpack that. As a young boy, I was raised in a Zulu traditional family, also based on, on Christian ethos. I was raised by a single mom and I grew up around a lot of sisters, like six. Growing up, uh, I grew up in a very nurturing, in a very loving environment. As a boy, you expected to perform um, physical tasks, you know, tasks that are heavier. You, you are not really exposed to things such as cooking, even the way you express yourself. For example, a man is not supposed to cry, you know, it's only women who can cry and all those things. I was not really taught about sex. Talking about sex with your parents is a taboo. You would never do such. But you, you tend to learn about sex from other learners. There was already pornography. As your friends are having it in their phones, you, 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 you look at it. You tend to look at it and that's how you, you tend to learn as a young person. It's fine for men to express themselves sexually compared to women. For example, a, a man can be as promiscuous as he can. You know, it's fine culturally or traditional for a man to be like that. Whereas uh, when it comes to women, you know, they will throw all kinds of words, you know, if, if you express yourself in that way. It's a very healthy conversation that we're having. I'm, I'm absolutely loving the direction that it's taking and I'm loving your openness as well. Without being disrespectful to our cultures and disrespectful to other people's cultures, can we healthily say that a child that is born gay or bisexual or transgendered or intersexed feels they have no place to belong already in their upbringing before they even get to school? because of culture. I said, I'm Swati, she's, she's Twana. Now I'm mm. teaching a class, a diverse class, mm. with girls, boys, as well as, as, as mm. probably lesbians and mm. gays. Now we are sitting here with a culture that we are taught that girls do this, boys do that. Now we also have this ever-changing society, which is becoming more complex and more confusing. And then throw in religion there, it becomes even more complex. More because complex. You, you, and, were, and, you, and, and, you were told that yes. God created Adam, Adam and Eve, Eve not, not Adam and Steve. Yeah, at no, the same no. time, it's, it's, I'm a South African who has to note that this is a diverse country. Mm -hmm. There should be inclusivity in, 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 in every society and mm -hmm. every setting. When I grew, I, 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 I know nothing about that. So I was supposed to tell learners in class about that. That is why we are so, we are we become, become skeptical about that as mm. we are not able to can explain everything, what's happening, because some of, the, of these things, you know nothing about them. We are teachers, mm -hmm. you know, so you need to go and research. I mean, if you're a teacher and you're standing in front of the learners, my culture aside, I must deliver information and I must be honest with the learners, you know. Tell them about lesbians, tell them about it is, it is just a sexual orientation. You can be Zulu and still be gay. Gentlemen, how do you feel? Yeah. Yes. Uh, it, 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 as I said, it gives us a problem because it can take us back into the lesson of uh, gender roles. Yeah. When we go to gender roles, that is where we're going to look at a, a, a men doing this, women doing this. Those gender roles, we, we, and especially as teachers, you are in a, in a space where you need to push the envelope. Mm. You need to Get even, uncomfortable, to yes. become comfortable. You need to even yeah. challenge your, your own beliefs. So you're uncomfortable about it. I'm a learner. I'm asking you questions about being gay. 
find the discomfort in you to educate me? Even in our uh, 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 syllabus, we, 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 we don't see it. Uh, they, or they don't stipulate it in, in a, a, a fair way, in such a way that we can uh, 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 party to, to these learners. Mm -hmm. So whenever, How do they put it in the textbooks? How do they put it in the syllabus? It's, it's, that it's, is not fair. It's not fair. Because how? It's, it's not put uh, as a, 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 a lesson so that it can be uh, uh, posed to the learners. Is this shared? You because see? you see it's difficult. Mm. I mean, we, there's still so much of stereotyping going there. Mm. And yeah. the closet is opening mm. very slowly. As you know, the others have said that learners are bringing up issues and we do see the diversity. We, mm. we are seeing those learners in front of us mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's the way we approach them as mm -hmm. well that's going to break the ice. The learners are actually trying to, to, to come to us and the more they come to us, the more we actually uh, move back. And this is not the, actually the time to actually move back because the time has changed. To be honest, it's my job as a learner to put faith in my teacher, to try to see what my teacher can do for me, to see if it's going to become a comfortable place or a dangerous place. We need to know the learners, and it's our responsibility to understand them. Mm. Yet we are given little time to know them. The LO periods must be maybe double, or maybe if it it is five times a week, then we can get more information, and the teachers will be will get enough time and will be able to tell us more things that we want to know. How important is trust and confidentiality where the subject life orientation is concerned? Kids look up to teachers as, as people, as a first point of entry. They, they, they look up to you as teachers that, you know what, I have confidence. Have you heard the network where, where is t t children will tell you, my teacher says this. So, mm. so it's important if the teacher... Even now, in our adult uh, years, yeah. we can still quote my things that were said, said my, my by our says, strongest, mm. most favorite teachers in the mm. yesterday. And, and, and because of it, it's because it, they grounded on the trust. I can't say I agree, because some teachers, they kind of take advantage and use what you say to them as ammunition. If the teacher says something that's at variance, or even at home, they, there's something that they say, it has variance with the teacher, you're going to create doubt. Absolutely, thank you so much. This was very, very fruitful. You do know that the learners have been watching in another room. We flip the script. We usually have educators watching in another room while I talk to the learners. We're going to extend the conversation and bring out the learners so um, they can give us their thought processes um, from what they've seen us discuss. Thank you so much. My parents taught me about sexuality in a very roundabout way. If I had to learn about HIV AIDS, my mom would bring home a pamphlet and say, read through this and we'll talk about it later. But we never ever spoke about it after that. Uh, my parents allowed me freedom of, uh, of anything. But when it came to sex, sex wasn't spoken about at home. If you were talking about sex, they would talk about, don't give your heart away. <laughs> That's what my dad would say. My grand would say, don't fall pregnant. Um, your parents work too hard, don't fall pregnant. And, and that's all I knew about sex. Sex I learned from my primary school friends. I feel personally that parents need to be hands-on about sexuality from as soon as a child starts asking questions. Uh, many parents I know, when their kids are young, they have a shower with their kids. And as soon as you know that your kid is asking you, mom or dad, what is that? Be honest with your children, tell them, make, make your kids feel that sex is not something to be ashamed about. And if they're not getting the information from the people that they should be trusting the most, you don't know what kinds of information that they, and who they're gonna get it from. We've had a fantastic discussion thus far, and now we've extended the discussion. Our learners are in the space, familiar faces. How are you doing, guys? Hello. Good to see you again. How do you feel teachers are held back by their traditions? Parents, quote teachers, they're trying to make us live back in the past the way they lived, and they don't understand where we come from. Mm -hmm. Because nowadays there's things like social media, tabloids, and newspapers, which us kids, we want to follow. We would rather than be like, mom, relax, and like listen to celebrities, because we idolize celebrities. They play a big part in teenage life. Teenage life, people think, is just something that's so simple. Well, teenage life has changed. The background, she didn't 
because okay there will be a certain way which a teacher is brought up them and when they get to teach they actually not comfortable with a certain topic because of her background or his background they never actually discussed it further or mm. it was never ever discussed in mm. so they just read what's in a textbook and just move on what would you like the learners to take away from today's show i would like you to empower yourselves you know there's so much out there but you need to embrace yourself so uh, you know you you use the classroom as your platform to empower yourself about aspects of sexuality and everything else that you can take from there also remember that you know we are steeped in our values our culture system and that has a place as well mm. to take us forward mm. so you always blend the two together mm -hmm. Sometimes it gets so difficult because they ask questions, you know, questions that makes you not to be comfortable at times, but at the end they need that information. Mm. Yeah, mm. so I need to, sometimes I need to teach myself, I need to train myself, how can I answer this question? How do I help them in this situation? So mm. sometimes I go, I go all out, um, consult social work, how do I assist this learner? Dr. Mbisen, what's our way forward? Well, I think it's important, uh, 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 you know, you know, to acknowledge that uh, what we we've been talking about it's not easy. But also because teachers themselves they come from a, a particular space in their own lives. But it's for them to continue to acknowledge that look, that space may not be relevant now. But also the learners to understand that what that which the teachers may not may be uncomfortable with, it is for them to assist them. But the the, the, the two important role players are critical to know in ensuring that they, as, as, as the one pu uh, pushes the envelope, the other one then accepts, because the learners will not ask questions because they are malicious, because they mean bad. It is a cry for help. Some teachers are very judgmental, because you come to them asking about certain things and they don't give you right answers, because they're not used to you. And even if they do, they're like two-faced. To you, they tell you what they know, and when they turn around, they, they talk to someone else about you. The teachers must always, uh, always be mindful to know that they have a huge responsibility. Mm. And the responsibility mm. is that they are placed there to create a future. What do we both commit, both learner and educator, to doing better? The fear with us is when learners fail in their lives, uh, you, you, you sort of, uh, take the responsibility to say, I didn't. you personalize yeah. it, you internalize yeah. it. Yeah. And, 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 yeah, and, mm. and it reflects back on, on you. Yeah, I can say uh, our problem is uh, we are overprotective to these learners. Uh, sometimes it's caring, it's, it's caring. Mm. Yeah, it's also key because if I care uh, uh, my, uh, to my children, then I also give care to the kids in class. Mm. So if ever they want to do something that I feel I, I don't like it or maybe this will put them in danger, I, I, I will gonna say to them, stop this mm -hmm. so that they become safe. But they don't see that. Oh, I think as teachers, we shouldn't force the learners to live their lives the way we lived ours as we were growing up. We should let them live their lives like they do right now, mm. and then teach them to do the right things from their norms and mm -hmm. customs. Mm -hmm. These discussions today cause that, I mean, less of moralizing, as you know, because the temptation, especially educators, it is to impose your value system. It is to moralize, it is to judge. Every culture matters, every mm. tradition matters. What is important is how do we embrace kids? How do we make sure that they, they are confident to approach us with love? I agree with you completely and I think in conclusion of this beautiful conversation we've, have, we've had today, of all the words that we use, the one word that resonates in me that I'm going to take away from this and apply it even in how I parent my children, because at home we're teachers too, yeah. um, is respect. Yeah. Respect of experience, respect of differences, cultural differences, mm. traditional differences, and generational differences. Thank you so much for your time, everyone. It's been great. It's been really great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Educators, teach facts rather than personal opinion. Be aware of your traditions and culture, but do not impose them on learners. Parents, be aware children live in a different world. Learners, your rights stop where another person starts. 
Traditions are here to stay and rightfully so, as they give us a sense of identity and they reinforce a set of morals, values and beliefs in society. However, the manner in which we teach about sexuality and relationships needs to evolve to be more inclusive of learners, to be more conversational and a lot more progressive. We hope that today's show gave you the context required to approach conversations of sexuality with learners. I'm Dino Ranaga. Make sure to watch another episode of Breaking the Silence next week.